below, uh, right at the dirt line, and we'll be fine. We're gonna be out here for a while. Marijuana here will be seized basically as evidence uh, taken to uh, DEA's headquarters, processed and then placed in a secured lock facility until it can uh, be destroyed at the appropriate time and place. This is opening. There's a campsite. Uh, this may be all that they've left behind. But you've got uh, equipment to s facilitate the grow itself, including the drip irrigation that we've seen all through the grow. And you've got a number of uh, packages of uh, miracle Grow plant food, all-purpose plant food. It's possible the growers could come back. There's probably very little chance at this point to catch them. They're going to know that we're in this garden, so it's very little chance that they're going to come back. Flour tortillas, lettuce, this hasn't been there very long, that's still cold, still fresh. Pork cracklings or chicharrones, la morena, pickled jalapeno peppers, beans, rice, more beans. Educated guests would say this is a Hispanic grill. about the third hit is when I began to feel the tension um, dissipate. It really helps my speech. I feel much calmer, much less rushed. And I feel like I can control the muscles that I couldn't control before I smoked. It's kind of nice. I don't make as many funny faces. <laughs> If we just threw the marijuana laws off the books and said let's concentrate on cocaine, methamphetamine, and any other any type of drug, because there's a recognition that marijuana is, is not the way to go. It's it's not the, it's not harmful. Uh, it has medicinal purposes. If if that was if that was acknowledged in this country today, I think it would have a, a devastating impact. Certainly, it's possible that the nine-year-old occasionally might get stoned and that that would be more likely than it has been until now. But the problem is that we have to weigh what kind of damage we want to tolerate. And for me, an America where there was a certain danger that people might experience drugs who don't under the current regime would be preferable to one where drugs are criminalized because the problem is that once you criminalize drugs, then you create an underground economy where drugs command a much greater price than they would otherwise because of the danger, the illegality in handling them and selling them. And as a result, you have certain communities that are vulnerable to ending up depending on that particular economy. I think the real difference is that during the, 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 the 1920s and early 30s, when, uh, when Americans started talking about repealing alcohol prohibition, most of them could still remember what it was like when alcohol was legal. It was, they could imagine it. The problem we have today is that none of us have grown up in a world in which marijuana was legal, was regulated, was sold in shops and taxed. So the change is more difficult to make because we can't picture it, we can't imagine it. And in some respects, I think it's that lack of imagination of 
fact that this really, we could just make it legal and the world would not crumble. Radio come to order. I don't know any thinking person in Washington, D.C. who thinks this should go on. This insane campaign against marijuana. You never meet anyone who's actually in favor of it. But everybody thinks it has to go on because they think everyone else wants it to. In the end, the absurdity of this will tell. The spell will be broken. I think they might be voting right now. They're voting right now. If we could find a politician who had the, initially the guts, but most important, the intelligence to see that this is the case and make it a subject, it would immediately become the next big thing. And we would shake ourselves and wonder how and why it had taken us so long to see where our own best interests lay. Amendment offered by Mr. Hinchy of New York. This amendment simply has to do with the ability of states to relieve the suffering of their citizens without federal intervention and the right of states to pass laws regulating medical practice without federal intervention. Balance of my time. That was good. Mr. Chairman, I rise today in strong opposition to the Hinchy Amendment. Let's be clear, marijuana is not harmless, as some claim. And the message we're sending to our children today is very strong. Whether we support legal use of marijuana as a precursor to methamphetamines, to heroin, this is the message we'll be sending if we approve this. I strongly urge my colleagues to vote against this uh, amendment. I rise in strong support of the amendment. Our coalition of freedom-minded Republicans and Democrats on this issue is based on compassion for those who are suffering, a commitment to personal liberty, and a firm belief in the principles of federalism. Nice. Great. If I am terminally ill, it isn't anybody's business on this floor how I handle the pain or the illness that is, or the sickness associated with that illness. I rise to oppose this amendment. <clears throat> I had young people work for me in my supermarket who I knew were using marijuana, and they used it for a period of years, folks, and they're not as sharp after years of marijuana use as they would have been. It dulls the brain. It, it holds back the growth. I have close friends and even relatives who are living less of a life than they would have if they hadn't spent years abusing marijuana. Marijuana is a dangerous drug that is not adequately respected by the young people of this country because they've been seduced by leaders in this country advocating that it's a perfect, wonderful drug. Gentlemen's time has expired. Mr. Chairman, the arguments that have been put forth against this amendment have nothing to do with this amendment. This amendment has nothing to do with legalizing marijuana. It has to do with two simple things. Being compassionate for people under the lawful provisions of laws passed in their states and the states' rights. This Congress should recognize states' rights, live up to the provisions of the Constitution, and pass this amendment. A sufficient number has risen and a recorded vote is ordered. And members will record their votes. It's the end of a long road here. Um, it's feeling pretty good. I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. This is going to be the longest 10 minutes of my life, man. <laughs> yeah. Here's Johnny. The plants are way too many, too uh, vast, too large to be able to hand carry these out. It would take us all day. This is one of the few gardens that uh, we'll use the helicopter this summer to sling it out. We're probably going to have 50 bundles. You're looking at uh, 20 guys out here. 20 guys and probably of those 10 are out there every week or three times a week.
This isn't all Miami Vice. This isn't Cubs and Crockett, you know, in silk shirts driving a Pantera or something. This is a bunch of hardworking cops making, you know, an okay living. It's not a great living, not a great wage, but out here working their tails off to make a difference for the public. Rough count, 17,000.